Welcome back to Web Studio D and our work on digital imaging, uh, reimagining Code of Edoc and the characters. This is Sam Yaza. And as you can see, we're speeding through my usual process of cleaning up the sketch, which was dropped in at 600 dBi as a CYMK file. And I'm merely using a eraser and getting rid of all of my ugly little sketch lines. After that, I will be going to Sketch and Stamp under Filter and making the lines more solid. And then one more time, come back with an eraser and also a black pencil and clean up my lines so I will be ready. I'll take the background out as transparent. Here's what we're focusing on this time, and that is the lock image pixels. My main layer remains locked so that those lines will never get affected as I color in. What I'm going to do once that's done is create a new layer and in creating that new layer I will go ahead and copy the original layer. I will then uh, deselect it and drop it onto a second layer, the new layer. As you can see there are two here. I'll line those puppies up and I will then focus totally on the second layer to do my coloring. Coloring this time is a little different too. I wanted to use the original Samyaza from Code of Edoc and use his colors to color in my new reimagined character. Using the dropper, I go ahead and select the color. Using the paint bucket, I go ahead and drop those colors in. Uh, again, using it only on the second layer, which I can affect. The first layer will remain locked so that my lines will remain crisp and clear, and you'll see that a little later on in the video. I went ahead and played around with different colors. I can, because I can always take them out and start over by going into my history. You can see my history on the right-hand side constantly changing, and I'm constantly going back and forth and choosing what I like. And here we go with the face. I didn't like that. Time to try something different. Oh, wanted to drop in that background for a little bit of contrast. Play around with my pixels and get the feeling and the image that I want. As usual, I use tint and shade to color. Tint being the color with white, shade being the color with black. And merely giving it a little bit of the cartoony three-dimensionality that people like to see. On this one, I am not going to use any texture because that's not what the purpose of this video is. We'll do that again another time. Right now, though, I just want to see if I can pull out a little bit of dimension and give Semyaza a little bit of life. There he is. Now, the eyeballs were so tiny, I couldn't see what the heck I was doing. So I went ahead and zoomed in and really zoomed in until I could see what I wanted to and then go ahead and make a very tiny brush. Now most of my brushes I work at 50%. Once the color is based in I work at 50% so that I have room to build up and also give different layers. And we go ahead and zoom back out once the eyeballs are the way that I like them to be. And now I want to go ahead and work on that background. Go to the background layer and this is just playtime, uh, trying to give it a little bit of that mystical, kind of that uh, out in space look. And you'll notice that I'll go ahead and do some darkening around the character and not be satisfied because it got too dark and I'll lighten it up. And bam, I'm done. Now one of the things I want to show you is if I turn off the different layers, what we're going to look at here, there is the original locked pixels. Here it is with color, and now I'm going to turn off the lock pixels, and you can see how much I overlapped. That shows you how important it is to keep that one layer of locked pixels to put on top of the entire image. Thanks, Samyaza. See you soon, Web Studio D.